Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Friday, September 11th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. O God, we have heard with our ears, our fathers have told us, what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. You, with your own hand, drove out the nations, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples, but them you set free. For not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm save them. But your right hand and your arm, and the light of your face, for you delighted in them. You are my king, O God. Ordain salvation for Jacob. Through you we push down our foes. Through your name we tread down those who rise up against us. For not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me. But you have saved us from our foes, and have put to shame those who hate us. In God we have boasted continually, and we will give thanks to your name forever. Our Old Testament reading today is from Second Chronicles chapter 29. Hezekiah began to reign when he was 25 years old, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abadiah, the daughter of Zechariah, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. He brought in the priests and the Levites and assembled them in the square on the east, and said to them, Hear me, Levites, now consecrate yourselves, and consecrate the house of the Lord, the God of your fathers, and carry out the filth from this holy place. For our fathers have been unfaithful, and have done what is evil in the sight of the Lord our God. They have forsaken him, and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord, and turned their backs. They also, also shut the doors of the vestibule and put out the lamps, and have not burned incense or offered burnt offerings in the holy place to the God of Israel. Therefore the wrath of the Lord came on Judah and Jerusalem, and he has made them an object of horror, of astonishment, and of hissing, as you see with your own eyes. For behold, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in my heart to make a covenant with the Lord, the God of Israel, in order that his fierce anger may turn away from us. My sons, do not be now negligent, for the Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to minister to him and to be his ministers and make offerings to him. Then the Levites arose, Mahath the son of Amasai, and Joel the son of Azariah, of the sons of the Kohathites, and of the sons of of Merari, Kish the son of Abdi, and Azariah the son of Jehelilo, and the, Gersh and the Gershonites, Jonah the son of Zima, and Eden the son of Joah, and of the sons of Elizaphan, Shimri, and Yule, and the sons of Asaph, Zechariah, and Mataniah, and of the sons of Heman, Huel, and Shimi, and of the sons of Jeduthun, Shemala and Uzazel. They gathered their brothers and consecrated themselves and went in as the king had commanded by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. The priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it, and they brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of the Lord into the court of the house of the Lord. And the Levites took it and carried it to the brook Kidron. They began to consecrate on the first day of the first month, and on the eighth day of the month 
they came to the vestibule of the Lord. Then for eight days they consecrated the house of the Lord, and on the sixteenth day of the first month they finished. Then they went in to Hezekiah the king and said, We have cleansed all the house of the Lord, the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils, and the table for the showbread and all its utensils. All the utensils that King Ahaz discarded in his reign when he was faithless we have made ready and consecrated, and behold, they are before the altar of the Lord. Then Hezekiah the king rose early and gathered the officials of the city and went to the house of the Lord. And they brought seven bulls, seven rams, seven lambs, and seven male goats for a sin offering for the kingdom and for the sanctuary and for Judah. And he commanded the priests, the sons of Aaron, to offer them on the altar of the Lord. So they slaughtered the bulls, and the priests received the blood and threw it against the altar. And they slaughtered the rams, and their blood was thrown against the altar. And they slaughtered the lambs, and their blood was thrown against the altar. Then the goats for the sin offering were brought to the king in the assembly, and they laid their hands on them. And the priests slaughtered them and made a sin offering with their blood on the altar, to make atonement for all Israel. For the king commanded that the burnt offering and the sin offering should be made for all Israel. Our writing this morning is from Martin Luther. Forgot to look up what it is. September the 11th. A writing from Martin Luther from his commentary on Psalm 68. In conclusion, the psalmist states that despite the insignificance of the clouds in God's Christians to the world, they are nonetheless a wonder to behold in view of God's imminence in them and his rule over them. Everyone, therefore, really ought to stand in awe of them and honor them, since they form God's holy dwelling place. For the word saints refers to a holy place and dwelling here. The holy Christians make up the holy dwelling place of God in the New Testament, where God is no longer confined to cities and buildings as he was in the Old Testament. These Christians are sanctified far more perfectly than Solomon's temple, sanctified with the Holy Spirit himself and anointed with the living oil of God's grace. Whoever touches them also touches the apple of God's eye. Zechariah 2.8 This assurance is given to us to console and fortify us in our days of persecution. Whatever persecution is visited on us, whom they despise, is really inflicted on God, who will deal terribly with them. The appellation, the God of Israel, signifies that our God is none other than the one whom the Israelites once had. It is Christ whom the Israelites once possessed, and of whom we now also say, He who does these things is no longer only Israel's God, but the God of the whole world. Nobody is strong in his own might. No one has the strength for successful resistance to evil. It is God alone who vouchsafes power and strength to all, namely to all who are powerful and strong, so that he alone is blessed and he alone is God. This is the meaning of... Blessed be God, or as St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10, 17, Let him who boasts, boast of the Lord. Amen. We join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to, ju from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man, we thank you that you have redeemed us poor and condemned creatures, not by any of our works, merit, or worthiness, but by your holy suffering, death, and shedding of blood. O Lord, your suffering was great, your torment was heavy. We cannot comprehend how many your stripes, how deep your wounds, or the bitterness and painfulness of your death. How inexpressible is your love that reconciled us to your heavenly Father. In great fear of death, you sweat blood on the Mount of Olives, drops of blood that fell upon the earth. And there, abandoned by all your disciples, you willingly gave yourself into the hands of those who led you mercilessly, bound hard and cruel from one unjust judge to another. You were falsely accused and condemned, spit upon, scoffed at, and struck in the face with fists. For the sake of our misdeeds, you were hit, whipped, crowned with thorns, and treated wretchedly, like a worm and not a man. You were despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, so that even a heathen heart took pity and said, Behold the man. For the sake of our sin, you were counted a sinner, and hung up between two evil doers as a curse. You were pierced in hands and feet with nails, and in your highest thirst you were given vinegar and gall to drink. Finally, in great pain, you gave up your spirit so that you could pay our debt, and we could be healed by your wounds. O Lord Jesus Christ, for this and all your other suffering and pain, we give you thanks and praise. We pray you, let your holy bitter suffering and death not be lost on us, but grant that at all times this may be our comfort, and that we may boast in it, and that as we ponder it, all evil desire in us may be snuffed out and subdued, and all virtue may be implanted and increased, so that we, having died to sin, may live in righteousness, following the example you have left us, walking in your footsteps, enduring evil with patience, and suffering injustice with the good conscience. Amen. Most merciful Father, with compassion you hear the cries of your people in great distress. Be with all who now endure affliction and calamity. Bless the work of those who bring rescue and relief, and enable us to aid and comfort those who are suffering, that they may find renewed hope and purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.